Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of YouTube Developers Live. My name is Ikai Lan. I'm a member of the YouTube Developer Relations team. And in today's show, we are going to be talking about GitHub. Now, GitHub, if you haven't heard of it before, it's a way for people to share open source code and to contribute to open source. And as of very recently, we've moved our code samples as well as some of our open source projects here at YouTube to GitHub. So in today's show, we're going to go over what GitHub is, um, a rough overview of what it looks like, some basic Git commands. This is not going to be a Git tutorial, but I'm going to give you enough so you can get started, as well as uh, some intro to some cool Git tools like Git uh, GUIs that we use. And at the end, we're going to talk about how you can contribute to our Git projects. And uh, one final note, which is you know, how we like to end the show, um, just, a, just a quick commercial at the end of the show. So with that, why don't we go ahead and get started? Now, you may or may not have noticed, uh, we, haven't really, uh, we haven't made a lot of noise around this, but we've moved our API code samples to GitHub. Uh, they previously used to be hosted at code.google.com slash p slash youtube dash api dash samples. But now it's much easier to find them by going to github.com slash youtube. So if you browse to github.com slash youtube, you'll see that this is the home for all of our API samples and some of our open source projects. So most of our samples follow the naming convention of yt dash samples and then the name of the project. So in this case, you'll see that we have samples for Go, JavaScript, Ruby, Python, and most of the major programming languages that we support. So why don't we go ahead and start looking at how we can start working with GitHub. Now let's say that you want to get at the GitHub samples for Java, the YouTube API samples. You would go to this page, again that's github.com slash YouTube, click on yt-samples.java, and you'll see that this is a project that I have, uh, that we've been contributing to. So if you want to this, download this sample code, what you would do is you would go over to the right hand part of the screen and you'll see download zip. And what's nice about this is that you don't have to install any clients, you don't have to install Git, you don't have to know anything about Git. You just hit download and you should have code that can work, that you can fork off of and start working on. So that's really cool. Um, but let's rewind a little bit and talk about why Git. Well, GitHub is where developers are. GitHub has a really good model where you can create an open source project and people can use what's called forking to create a copy of your project and contribute to that copy. And uh, people can recursively keep doing this, they keep forking the fork. And what typically happens is you have a canonical copy of a project up in Git, like in this case, it's just in the YouTube account under yt-samples.java. Someone might fork this, make some changes, and they would send what's called a pull request to me. A pull request is a way of saying, hey, I've made some changes. You know, I want you to check these out. And I can go through and say, do I want these changes or not, and merge them in or not merge them in. And I, I think that's really cool because if you think about the old way in which you used to contribute to open source, you used to have to send a patch, and it was really difficult. And what's really nice about this way is that I've seen some projects where a fork has actually overtaken the canonical or main or original project and become more popular. And that's perfectly fine because this is open source. So uh, more about Git, why I like Git a lot, Git is fast, right? If you come from a world of SVN or subversion, um, you know that subversion uh, can, it, it, subversion is based on the idea that you have a central repository and you're, you're copying from the repository. Um, whereas Git is more of a de decentralized system. So uh, GitHub is a centralized system for a decentralized uh, SCM, source control management tool, but uh, you can run Git without using GitHub. And if GitHub goes down, you could have a backup server that you push to, and you can do a lot of really cool things. So why don't we go ahead and do a quick introduction to Git. If you don't have Git installed, you can go ahead and search for Git. That's spelled G-I-T. And if you're using uh, something like Ubuntu and you want to install the packages, um, git-core, so sudo apt-get, git-core will get you the tools you need. You can also download some packages. I'll make your life easier. Um, I've downloaded this from Mac. Now, I've already done this, so I'm not going to go through this process. But here I am in a terminal. I'm in a temp directory, so I can basically trash this directory. Now, I have git already, and if I hit git, I'm going to get a bunch of commands. So the first thing we're going to want to do if we want to track the project, if we don't just want to download the zip file, is we want to go to the GitHub page, right? And we want to find the clone URL. 
So right here, this is the clone URL right here. And I, I guess you can clone with Subversion, but typically that's not, that's not something I commonly see. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this to my clipboard. Now I'm going to go back to the terminal. I'm going to type git clone. I'm going to paste the repository in here. And there you go. I've cloned the whole thing. Now that was pretty quick. Now I have a fast network connection here, but I guarantee you Git is really fast. It's really, really cool stuff. So if I go in here, I'll see that I have all the projects for the Java sample code and I can start running this on my local machine. Um, we're using Maven nowadays, so if you have Maven, you can start building this, running this, importing it to your IDE, all that cool stuff. Now, Git's got a lot of really, um, uh, Git is very, very fast, like I mentioned. And one of my favorite commands is to use a Git log. And a git log, I'm going to pipe this into, into more so I can paginate it. Um, git log it tells me all the commits that have been happening. And it doesn't show me the code, but there is a verbose mode so I could see all the different diffs of what I've been doing in Git. Um, but hopefully, you won't need to be doing this too much if you're just getting started. And let's say we make an update to the repository. Let's say we push some new uh, code to fix a bug or add a new feature. What would you do? Well, you would usually type git pull. And this is going to check to see if you have the latest version of code. I do have the latest version of code, and this doesn't do anything. So this is really cool. And you could start working with things right away. Um, the, when you start to want to make changes, you want to learn about git add as well as git commit. And uh, you know, like I said, this is not going to be a tutorial about git. Uh, one of the best books on git is actually free and open source. It's over here. It's called the just search for git book. And you can find this on the main Git homepage. This was written by one of the founders of GitHub. And it's a very, very good detailed book. But I can understand that sometimes you might, just might want to get started much quicker. So there are a couple of good Git quick starts on the web. But over time, if you're getting into Git, I would highly recommend reading this book only because there's a lot of uh, more advanced usages. You want to learn about how branching works. Branches are very, very cool. Um, it, whereas in something like Subversion, you want to avoid branching. In Git, you always want to be branching. You always want to be merging. Um, with Git, since a lot of things are local, when I do a check-in, I don't need to be online to do Git check-in. So you can be on a plane, you can be on, uh, you can be on a train, and you can be writing code and just making small changes. So that's all really cool stuff. Now. I'm going to show you one more thing, um, which I think is really cool. I tend to like to use command line, and I would highly recommend you use the command line. But Git has become so popular that Git has now integrated with lots of the popular IDEs. For instance, if I'm writing a project in IntelliJ that has Git integration, it'll tell me which lines have I changed, right? Like, which lines have I added since the last commit? And in Git, uh, it is a best practice to always be committing, because commits are so fast and local that you should be committing lots and lots of small atomic changes before essentially merging back into master head, which you can think of this as, um, as merging back into trunk. This is something you do very common. So Git is not, doesn't map to other source controls like subversion one-to-one uh, -one because the workflow is a little bit different, but it's something you get used to. So I tend to like the command line for doing pulls, doing, um, doing pushes, as well as doing commits. Like I don't like using GUI, GUI, to, <laughs> GUI tools for those things, but I do like using GUI tools. And when you go to the Git homepage, you'll see some of the many GUI tools. Um, many of these are free, some of these are paid, and the one that is becoming lots really popular is called GitHub for Mac. Now, I've got this installed for you guys, and where I really like to use GUI tools is for Git log, right? Is um, I can very quickly see you know, what's different. I could scroll up and down, and I can do this much more easily than I can in a terminal. So you'll see that uh, green is stuff that we've added. And we've just done an import, so most of the stuff is green. But let's see, here's some changes. Oh, what have we done? Oh, there was a problem with the XML file. We removed the line, and we added a line. Um, I'm not sure what we did in there. I think we just deleted a space or converted tabs to spaces or something weird like that. Um, and what's also nice is branches. And we haven't been doing much branching here, but the GUI will very quickly visualize how, uh, where you have branched, where you have merged, and allow you to diffs quickly. So again, if you've never looked at Git, I highly encourage you to do it. It's a very, very cool system. Um, so that's a Git GUI. That's a Git book. So I just want to go ahead and introduce all these things to you. And again, you don't need to know how to do this. You can just go to github.com slash YouTube, click on the project, and click on download zip. 
When we go back to the GitHub project, you'll see that mostly what's in here are, is sample code, but we've ho we host the code for YouTube Direct, YouTube Direct Lite in here, as well as some of YouTube's open source projects. So this is where we will be committing our resources in the future, and I encourage you to look here. We will be starting to put pointers on code.google.com to start pointing to our GitHub page. So that's what I have for you guys today. Um, you know, hopefully I didn't take too much of your time. And there's one last thing that I want to talk about, which is I have an announcement to make. And that announcement is that our team is hiring. So if you're interested in joining developer relations, come to developers.google.com slash jobs. Let me just verify that that's a working URL. It'd be really embarrassing if it weren't. Um, Yes, it is. So go to our page, developers.google.com slash jobs. Um, again, my name is Ekai Land. Thank you guys for joining me for the show, and hope to see you guys on GitHub soon. Take care.